everyone. So today I'm going to go through a little bit about how I sit at the desk and how I position the paper. Also to give you some tips on proper writing. So to start off with, I am right-handed. So what I usually like to do is I like to turn myself to the left and what that allows me to do is I can place my writing forearm on the writing surface. So similarly, if you're left-handed, what you can do is you're going to turn to the opposite side so that your left writing forearm will be rested on top of the desk. So the very first important tip I'm going to give to you is make sure that you sit up straight. You're going to be carrying yourself with your core and even though your writing forearm is rested on the desk, you're not going to be leaning your weight onto the writing arm. That's because when you lean your weight on your writing arm, it's going to impede you from making any of the movements when you're writing. So when you're writing, you may hear the term muscular movement. It's a little bit complex to explain because you can't actually see it physically happening on, um, on someone who's writing. But what that is, is that the movement actually started generating from the shoulder blade and it's going to travel down so that as you're writing, or we're writing copper plate script, so we're going to be landing this part of the forearm muscle onto the desk. So for example, if let's say I'm making up and down strokes, my shoulder is going to start moving and then you will see that this part of the arm is rested on the desk and the skin is pulling up and down. And if I want to do ellipses clockwise and anti-clockwise, this is what you'll see. Okay, clockwise, anti-clockwise. Okay, and you'll see this part of the skin is moving on the desk. When we write, we want to limit as much as possible the finger and your wrist movement. There will be some finger and wrist movement, but majority of the writing actually starts from the shoulder blade. And when we do our practice, that's what we want to practice so that we get the muscle memory in there. So as you're writing, you're going to be holding your writing tool firmly, but not a death grip. One of the things that I actually like to do a lot is called ghosting. What that is, is before you touch your uh, writing tool to your paper, I like to, for example, if there's a movement that I would like to do on paper, I would go above the page to see how it feels like when I'm writing it off in the air. It actually tells you three things when you're doing this. One is, is this a flourish that you would actually like to do? Um, or is it something that you would like to change? Number two is, as you're doing your ghosting, you're going to be figuring out if you need to reposition your arm or your paper. So for example, if let's say I want to make my flourish within this, this area, but if my arm is actually down here, I may not have enough space to come up and down. So I may need to move my arm accordingly in order to adjust where I want the flourish to end up being. And the last one is when you're doing your ghosting, you may also want to pay attention to how it feels when you're moving your arm. For example, if let's say you're sweating and you feel that when you're ghosting, your arm is getting stuck, then you may want to place a piece of paper underneath your arm so that it helps you with doing the flourish. So those are the three things that I usually pay attention to as I'm doing my ghosting. So last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about paper placement. So for example, we're doing copper plate script and if I'm sitting this way at the desk and when I'm writing, I may need to actually turn the page to this angle in order for me to achieve the 55 degree slant line. So a lot of the videos that I've shown before, I, when I position my camera is actually parallel to the page or parallel to the writing surface that I have. So you don't actually notice that my angle is actually this way, but this is actually how I write. 
So I choose to use a straight pan holder for a copper plate scrip because copper plate actually came about in the 17th and 18th century. And it was originally written with a, a small left oblique cut quail, which eventually transforms into a straight pan holder. And as I know, the oblique holder was originally invented for um, Spencerian scripts, and it actually came about in the 19th century. Both the straight pan holder and the oblique holder have very specific properties that could stop you from generating specific elements within the script. It's a complex topic and I don't want to get too detailed within this video, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a historical background as to why I choose the, uh, the straight pan holder versus the oblique pan holder. So I'm going to switch the camera angle right now so I can show you how I achieve the proper writing angle. So this is the new angle that I'm going to show you how I do my writing and how I position my paper. What you're seeing right now is that my the edge of my desk is actually running along perpendicular to the camera right now. I'm doing this way so that you can see what's happening when I adjust my paper so you can figure it out on your own when you are um, sitting at your desk. So right now my body is actually pointing this way. My chest is coming out this way toward the, uh, the desk. This is the edge of my desk, so I'm sitting at an angle. And right now my paper is, the edge of my paper is running parallel to the edge of the desk. So as you see, if I am going to be writing this way, you can see that if I'm going up straight up and down, my angle is running like this and it is not at the 55 degree slant line. So what I actually need to do is I need to adjust my paper so that as I'm moving my arm up and down, remember that you're using your muscular movement to generate the movement from your shoulder so that you're moving your arm up and down this way. I can rotate my paper to achieve that 55 degree slant line. So as you keep writing, you may need to keep adjusting your paper. And this is what happen, oh, this is my angle when I'm using a pencil. When I'm using a pen, you will need to make sure that the angle that is coming off from the slit, for example, right here, this is the slit that splits the two thines apart when you put down the pressure. This angle of the slit must run onto the 55 degree slant line. So as I'm writing, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. I want to make sure that this is going to be 55 degrees. Sorry, it's not centered. So this is going to be 55 degrees. Okay, and this will help you as you are pressing down and doing your strokes. It will help you with making both tines even as you are pressing down. Both tines will spread apart evenly. If you have it at a different angle, then one tine may drag. They may not open equally. One may open, but one may stay put. So you want to make sure that your tines are going to spread evenly by making sure that this nib runs along the 55 degree slant line. Okay, so for example, if there are people who actually hold the pen like this, you may actually need to turn your page quite a bit. You may need to turn your page actually all the way um, around in order to make your slant lines. Okay. So, but then you're still writing at the angle of the script, but you'll just need to rotate your paper. Sometimes you may actually need to adjust your pen hole versus adjusting the paper. So you may want to move it so that your pen hole is this way versus this way. Okay, so it's a lot of play, but that is how you achieve the thick and thin lines and to write on the angle of the scripts. It is a tricky topic. If there is any questions that you have that you may want uh, to troubleshoot, just send me a message 
and I can try to help you figure out if there's something that we need to adjust in order to get a little bit easier. So I just want to let you know that everything I shared with you, I learned from Paul Antonio. He's an excellent teacher and I'm by far know nothing compared to what he knows. And he has three excellent video on talking extensively about posture, placement, and position. So I've included those links down below and I highly recommend if you're serious in uh, learning copper plate or try to improve copper plate, make sure you watch them. So that's all for today. If you like my videos, make sure you give them a thumbs up. Share with me in the comments if there's any specific that you learned or you found helpful, if you have any questions or things that you're struggling with, also give me a comment so then I can try and see if I can address them. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I am going to share a lot of the tips and tricks that I actually use to um, practice my calligraphy. And I also teach calligraphy, so if you are interested to learn with me, uh, make sure that you go to my Instagram page. There is a link where you can check out um, any of my upcoming classes. So um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Until next time.